Hey everyone, it's Jessie. Usually I would say Jessie from Sugarberry, but it dawned on me that many of you probably don't know what Sugarberry is. Sugarberry was the name of my very first Animal Crossing island. I also made a Sugarberry 2.0. I thought it would be pretty fun to visit that dream address for today's video. It will be so much fun to walk around, take photos, and share that island with you. I will be putting the dream address down in the video description. It's not the original Sugarberry, but I do think it's still pretty cute. Let me know if you decide to visit. But right now, my rep is getting very sleepy. I think it's going to be time to lay down and dream. Let's go talk to Luna. I thought it would be a great idea to start today's dream address tour from the airport. I'm really excited to walk around and see what we have going on. It's been so long since I visited, I'm really excited to be reminded of how it looks. First I want to start by taking a look at the map. You can see my rep's name is still my name, Jesse. First villager, Bo. I absolutely love him, he has the silliest dialogue. My very favorite, Shep. Followed by Julia, I just love her colors. We have Stella, and then below Stella, we have Molly, my favorite duckling. Nan, Rudy, Patty, I love her. Sweet, sweet Maple, and Poppy. If we take a look at our island buildings, you can see my resident services is fairly close to the airport. Near resident services, I have Nook's Cranny as well as the Able Sisters for a little shopping district. I decided I would place my museum at the far back left corner. I'm not really a fan of the museum, and I have my campsite right up front so it's really easy for visitors to find it. So with that, let's go ahead and dive right into the tour. Right out from my airport, we have a small orchard that leads to resident services and a snacking spot. I thought it was kind of cute to welcome people to my island with a place to grab a bite to eat. And to the left of that, I have a fish market. I thought it was kind of cute to offer fresh fish for the villagers to put into their recipes. There's also a small spot to lay down and relax while listening to the ocean waves. I tried to put a variety of fish available for sale just to give variation as to what's been placed. If we follow this path, you will find a pier where there's an area to have a snack, sit and relax, look out at the ocean views, also a hammock, and there's a boat on standby just in case anyone wants to go and adventure. I really love these cute interactive items. And we found Molly. Isn't she just the sweetest? Now if we follow the path slightly up, we will find a little flea market that I put together. I kind of view it as a patchwork quilt. Little random items all thrown together in hopes that somebody can turn the trash to treasure. 
Right above that, we have my Able Sisters, where I have a couple really cute designs I found on display. I also have a bike rental right near my resident services. If only we could actually ride the bikes. And I found our next friend, Stella, on the beach. I don't know what it is about Stella, but she's always walking the beach of Sugarberry. Now we can go to one of my very favorite features of the island. I made a tunnel. The pieces I used to make this tunnel are the pergola with the purple flowers, castle walls, castle towers, and the castle gates. It makes such a great opportunity for pictures and cute little videos. Let me know if any of you decide to try and make one of these tunnels. It's really simple and it's such an eye catcher. Beyond our tunnel to the left, we have my peninsula, which I decided to make a small laundry area, as well as this beach. I really didn't know what to put here, but I like to imagine that a traveler crash landed here and decided to make it their home. To the right, we have Stella's home. I love the pinks and purples, so I decided to give her flowers to match. I think her house exterior is one of my favorites in the game. If we follow the pathway up, we will find Molly's home. Again, a very sweet house exterior. I gave her a moped and a beautiful pond and just kind of simple landscaping. I love using these vines instead of ladders to get to the tops of cliffs. I really love that feature and I'm glad they gave it to us. From here you can overlook a really neat foresty area that I made. I mixed both types of trees as well as tree items to make it full and lush. Now if we continue past Molly's house, we're going to find a land bridge that I made. I used a pattern on top of cliff and then the jail bars on the side to look like railing. I brought this right up to my museum, nice and centered. I didn't do much around the museum simply because it is not my favorite building. I still think it's pretty cute. Down from the museum, I have this really sweet waiting area. It's a pretty cute photo op. If we continue down this path, we'll find a bridge that leads us to a seating area in the middle of a lake. If we return back up, we find more pathing that takes us up a level. This is just a fun little area I made with bistro tables and a bridge. I just really love this view. Continuing over the bridge, it does roundabout back to the side that we were just on, but I created a cute little seating area with a journal by it, just thinking it's a great place to read. Now we will continue back down past that seating area photo op and continue following our path. This next area is one of my favorites I created. A small campsite with a tiny library and a place to read. I'm just realizing I definitely made several places to read and snack on this island. I guess it's just all about relaxing. As we continue on, you will see here is that lush foresty area that I was talking about, and it brings us to Maple's home. Before we look at Maple's home, 
I want to show you how this main path here connects right back to resident services. Here we have Julia's home. I think this one has to be one of my favorites as well. The colors are some of my favorites. The accessories you can put with it are endless. It's just so sweet. It also connects by a hop spot over to Stella's house. I also really love the waterfall area that I placed between their homes. I think it's really pretty. Also another spot to listen to the beautiful game audio. Now let's continue back to Mabel's house. Because Maple loves honey, honey made me think of bees, and bees made me think of flowers. So I wanted to surround her home in bright, beautiful yellow flowers. Continuing by, if we go up, we will find my little gyroid forest. I think it's super cute. I love how they dance to the music. Right past that we have Nan's home, yet again another snacking spot, and if we continue, probably my favorite area on the island, my flower field. I know there isn't a lot in the way of decorating in this space, but I love the bright colors of the flowers and all the textures because of all the different types. It's also this flower field where I found my love for the glowing moss. I absolutely adore how when you run through it, it gives off these little sparkles. It's beautiful in the daylight, but even more beautiful at nighttime. So let's return towards Maple's home and we're going to go up a level. This is a really easy location to miss because I kind of hid the stairway. And we found Poppy as well. She's so cute. As you can see here, I put a little music spot, another campsite, and a gyroid picnic. Which one is your favorite? I don't think I can pick just one. Poppy is just the cutest. I think she's such a sweet squirrel character. And now we're going to head downward on this pathing. You can see another little laundry spot. And as we come down this direction, we will find Poppy's home. Poppy sold the firewood to the villagers of the island. I liked using the different textures of patterns that I laid down of stumps, trees that I chopped down for stumps, as well as the wooden stool. And it connects right back over to where Julia's house is through this small path. And now we'll head up and to the right and find my favorite villager's home. I decided to make him a farmer. He's got a small harvest growing. He's got a tractor. Has anyone figured it out yet? Of course, it's Shep. I haven't found him for Green Grove yet, but I know he needs to be that last villager to make it complete. He's just so sweet. From Shep's home, let's go ahead and continue downward. Past Poppy's home, you'll find another garden area. Back when I played on this island, my niece would come and visit and we would ring the bell on this bike like crazy. Just kind of a funny memory. Down from there, you're going to notice this kind of boat. I think I was going for a ferry, something you could have lunch on with friends. And next to that, we have Patty's home. She's clearly a pumpkin farmer and a milk producer for the island. The interior of her home always made me laugh. 
It's definitely not a style I would choose to decorate with. Below Patty's home, we have a tool sale spot. I thought it was so cute to set up this booth because if my tools are breaking, I can only imagine the villagers are as well. And we found Nan. She's such a sweet goat character. And across the bridge to the left, a small flower field and a view of the campsite. I think it's really cute even if the tent isn't full, but when villagers visit, it's even cuter. Now let's go down toward the beach. I did leave my beaches bare on this island for the most part. Here we can see Rudy's home. He has a small flower patch of some of my very favorite flowers. Rudy was a villager I got right toward the end of working on this island. I really do like him, but going forward, I don't think I'll have him on any of my other islands, so I'm glad he's here. I used to have my island pier decorated so cutely, but then they added the update with Cap'n and it completely blocked off access to his boat. I just removed everything from the pier and left it blank. Right here is a little lavender field with another bike rental spot and a picnic place. If you walk up through the archway, you will see a beautiful butterfly as well as my top favorite flowers. This all wraps right back around to Patty's house. And if we return back, we can also see this beautiful fountain item. This is one of my favorite features. I made a flower bed. I know it's kind of silly, but I really do love it. And here is my rep's home. In real life, I love gardening, so it was really important that my island rep had a beautiful garden of her own. I love the looks of her home. It's very different than the one I have now since the one I have on my current island looks more like a barn. I think this one is pretty sweet. Down to the right, we find Bo's home. I know these are little jars of moss, but I like to pretend they're little jars of bugs you know, his friends. And as you can see, the bike rental, if you go on the beach, takes you right to Bo's home. I was really hoping I'd find my island rep, but no luck yet. So let's continue on up. If we go up to the next level, you'll find my rock garden. And Julia. She is so sweet. I also love how her nickname is Darling. This rock garden took forever. Have any of you done them before? It's so much fun, but it's a real process. Above that, I have a beautiful, magical fountain surrounded by butterflies and a lily of the valley. Then I made this really sweet forest picnic spot. For the seating, I used trees and chopped them down and utilized their stumps. I think it's pretty whimsical. My secret beach doesn't have much going on, but that's okay. And that loops right back around to the flower field. If you go around the outside edge on the beach and back down, it's going to bring you to this really sweet reading spot. I left a coin on the ground so you can toss it in and make a wish. I hope it comes true.
And if you follow that down, you will find my storage area, which is right next to my rep's home. I thought we could go inside the house real quick. Interior design is not my forte, but I did really enjoy giving it a try. I liked the spooky feel of this room. Then through this door, it takes you to my kitchen. Again, not a forte, don't judge. I just went with a little whimsical witch kitchen. I don't know. I'll stick to exteriors. The room to the left is actually from my original Sugarberry. I loved it so much, I didn't even touch it. Does it match the rest of the home? No. No, it doesn't. Actually, the rest of the rooms are still from the original Sugarberry. They don't match anything. It's just what I wanted to build, how I wanted to decorate, and what made me happy. So now if we go across to the right-hand room, we're gonna find my spa room. This is where I put my Luna dream bed, a um, soaking tub, music, a linen closet, everything you need for a relaxing time. Then we'll head to the stairs and go up. I always imagined this being a guest bedroom. However, I didn't make my own bedroom, so I guess we'll be roommates. Also, doesn't that food look amazing? If we go downstairs, it is my favorite room. This is an interior design I'm actually very proud of. Maybe it's a little spooky, but oh well. One of my very favorite shows is Law and & Order, and I also love watching things like Forensic Files, and I just wanted an investigation room. Does it match anything? No. Does it make me happy? Absolutely. And now let's head on out. Before I wrap up this tour, I have one more thing I really need to do. And that's find my island rep, Jessie. Hello friend, always be kind. It's such an important message and one I live by. Always be kind. And with that, we will head back to resident services. It's time to speak with Luna and wake up from this wonderful dream of Sugarberry. If you have a dream address that you haven't visited in a long time, I strongly suggest it. It's so fun taking a trip back in time, looking at my decorating style, and seeing how different my islands are now. 10 out of 10, absolutely recommend. today's video. I know I had a great time running around Sugarberry and seeing all my old villagers. It was so fun seeing how my decorating style then differs from how it is now. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider subscribing to the channel. Also, leave your comments down below with any build suggestions and ideas you'd like to see on this channel. Thanks for joining me on today's Dream Address Adventure. Until next time, take care. Bye!